One of the best and also most controversial cycles I've come up with in recent years is the sunspot cycle for boom and bust cycles in the economy about every 10 years. Now, I had heard about sunspot cycles because I study all cycles and they were supposed to be 11 years long term uh, from scientists and, and I found no correlation on 11 years in cycles so I dismissed this. But then one of the top fund managers in the US from PIMCO years ago was in an article saying sunspot cycles were what saved him from the tech wreck, the 2000 to 2002 bubble crash in tech stocks. And I'm like, well, maybe I should look back at sunspot cycles. Now, before that, I've been following Ned Davis's tenure decennial cycle where we seem to get recessions and major stock crashes rather than minor every 10 years, early 60s, early 70s, early 80s, early 90s, early 2000s, and then a little ahead of cycle, 2008 to 9. When I did look back at sunspot cycles, in the last century where Ned Davis came up with his decennial cycle from looking at stock data and economic data, I found it averaged 10 years, not 11. Okay, now I'm interested. So, so my research assistant and I, Dave Oakenquist, go through all the back testing and all this stuff. 88%, 88% of recession since 1850 when we can measure them in US and Europe happen in down sunspot cycles. 11 out of 11 major financial crises or depressions or debt deleveraging, 100% in down sunspot cycles. So I said, oh, I have to add this to my hierarchy. The technology cycles every 45 years, the demographic about every 40, the geopolitical about every 35 years, all of these booming and busting. This happens about every 10 years. The difference here is sunspot cycles are not clock-like. They can range from eight years to 14 years, 10 to 11 is much more typical. Well, we just happen to have the most irregular sunspot cycle hit, the one before this one. It peaked in March 2000, right at the top of the tech bubble and went down into mid-2009, just after the bottom of the Great Recession. And this is typical of sunspot cycles when I really looked back at them and took them more seriously. There tends to be crashes in the early part of the cycle when it peaks and turns down, and then again when it bottoms. Perfectly what we saw, 2000-2002 tech wreck, right when the cycle peaked and first turned down, Great Recession, 2008 to 2009, as it was bottoming out before it turned up again. Now, the last cycle um, peaked in February 2014, turned down, and because of such strong quantitative easing, we did not see you know, a major downturn. We did see, started to see some substantial corrections in the, you know, early 2016 and so, but, but not normal. But this cycle now, and here's the thing, it is eight to 14 years. I would not know how to <laughs> project that. Scientists do. Top scientists at NASA and Stanford University and places like that do track these cycles. It affects satellites and major electrical infrastructures. 20% more radiation from the sun at the top of the cycle than the bottom. Higher sun radiation not only means better feeling and energy coming to the earth, it also means more evaporation and rainfall. So, of course you'd expect this to affect agricultural cycles, which it does. But I found a book by Harlan True Stanley. Now, I think it had more credibility if you'd have taken out the middle name. Back in 1937, he documented sunspot cycles for 50 years, from 1880 through 1930. Published this book, again, 1937. And he showed a good correlation with agricultural cycles. But you know where the correlation was stronger and the best? Manufacturing cycles, the business cycle. 
So again, if I were to bring up sunspot cycles and say it correlates with agricultural production and stuff, that would not be a hard story to tell. It correlates the most with our business cycle, which means people, when there's more energy coming, feel better, more positive. People feel better when they're sitting out in the sun, soaking in the rays. Manufacturing is not affected by weather like agriculture as much. And weather is affected by other than just these sunspot cycles. The closest correlation you'll see in this chart from this book, and the book's called Sunspots and Their Effects. It's unbelievably close to the manufacturing cycle back in the late 1800s, early to mid 1900s. This guy published this book and nobody listened. I brought this up several years ago and outside of our subscribers and people at our conferences, nobody hears about this. Nobody even considers, it sounds absurd. It shouldn't be absurd, number one, so people need to learn to think out of the box, but this cycle is important. And we have the best long-term cycles and in our hierarchy of four cycles takes it down to technology, demographic, and geopolitical, the three major dimensions. But this gives us timing. Those, those are all 35 to 45 year cycles. This gives us timing down into decades and especially again, when the cycle first turns down and when it bottoms. Now this long cycle here, the second one, is projected to bottom around late 2020 by scientists. That means the odds of a crash, this great crash I'm predicting on the backside of our winter season after unbelievable quantitative easing and kicking the can down the road, is most likely to start between now and late next year. And again, these scientific forecasts may vary a bit. It's already been extended out from what they forecast years ago. But again, I can look to scientists to predict this, science, this cycle more accurately and track it. So be on the lookout and do not doubt something that correlates this much. 88% with recessions in the last 170 years, 100% with major financial crises, and look at that 50-year data in this chart. Unbelievable correlation with the manufacturing and business cycle beyond agriculture. So that's why we think differently. That's why we bring you information other people don't. I don't think out of the box to be a nut. I think out of the box to find stuff that people don't understand, but I prove that it works before I bring it to you. This cycle works and this cycle says, we are much more likely to see some sort of financial crisis in the next year, year and a half start. We'll keep you updated.